praise of your people and the worship of your people. Oh, Jesus, we give you all the
to God. Hallelujah. Please we worship and we praise your name. We lift our voices. Jesus, we worship and we praise your name.
please invite Pastor Hammond to come and carry us through. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wow, wow, wow. Yes, our God is greater. If our God is for us, then who can be against us? Can you imagine if your God has died for you? loved you so much that he has died for you then who can be against you who who can be against you hallelujah you want to be up on your feet and you want to raise up your right hand as we take our prophetic declaration bible says that the power of death and life is in the tongue this morning you want to declare it with all might in jesus name please raise your hand your right hand with me and let's declare this together i declare that the lord is my shepherd my shield and my strength you, O Lord, have called me by name and knew me before I was born. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pull down every satanic opposition and I silence every voice speaking against my progress. Your word says that death and life is in the power of my tongue. Today, now, I speak life and declare that I will not remember the former things, neither will I consider the things of old. I lift my eyes above the pain, loss, failure, shame, and disappointment of my past. I focus on the new things that you do in my life this year. As you make a way in my wilderness, and rivers in my desert, I embrace new health, new strength, new peace, new relationships, new power, new wealth, new doors of favor, and new commitment to serve God. In the area of intercession, evangelism, and discipleship, teach me your ways. Grant me an excellent spirit. As I break new grounds, spiritually, physically, financially, and socially, I will not die this year. I will not be put to shame. I will not fail. I will finish very well in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Somebody shout, Amen. 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 Wow, wow, wow. What an atmosphere. What an atmosphere. It is time for the word. Somebody say, it is time for the word. Well, be excited and be prepared to receive from the Lord this morning. This morning, it's an honor and a privilege to introduce the man of God to you. He is one of our very own, an anointed vessel of the Lord from our branch in Ellsbury. The one and only, Pastor Daniel Ashi Bikwe. Let's make some noise. this morning for the privilege to come before his presence and um, I want to thank my spiritual father Bishop James Asinsaki for the privilege to come this morning to be a blessing to the church I'm so grateful I don't take this opportunity for granted I pray for Bishop wherever he is that God will bless him, the Lord will keep him, and the Lord will show him favor beyond human understanding. In Jesus' mighty name. I also want to thank our mama, Mama Justine, for standing with our bishop. And she's also part of the privilege or the opportunity given to me to preach this morning. So I'm grateful for her. And I thank God for their lives. I pray for her wherever she is that God will bless and keep her. I also want to thank all the pastors, Pastor Amon, Pastor Margaret, for standing in and holding the fort. While some of us are far away in Aylesbury, they are here with our papa. And um, I'm so grateful that I have such wonderful um, brothers and sisters 
laboring together in the vineyard of the Lord. I also want to thank all the pastors in all our branches in Ghana and Switzerland. God bless you all for the 21 days of glory, the commitment and the dedication, the prayers. We, I believe strongly that we are moving to new dimensions of God's favor and goodness. Then also to all the leaders, the shepherds and all of them. God bless you all. God bless you all. And then the instrumentalists and the singers. Oh, God bless you. God bless you. There are times that, I mean, if I'm listening to you doing worship, I feel like, wow, we are locked down, but we are not locked down. <laughs> Hallelujah. Sing, singing to the glory of God. And I'm so happy. I mean, Kobe playing keyboard and guitar and all of that. I'm so happy. They, they progress. There are times they play some chords and I'm like, ah, who is the one playing? And I'll call her about, I'll send her a text. I say, who is the one playing the keys? And then she will tell me, it's Kobe. I say, ah. I am surprised. Ah, God bless all of them. Can we give a clap to everyone for God's goodness? Hallelujah. It tells you that our church is moving on. And the gate of hell shall not prevail against us. In Jesus' mighty name. Shall we pray? Father in heaven, we give you glory and we give you praise. The Bible says that the entrance of your word give it light. It give us understanding to the simple. This morning, Father, I don't have any strength of my own. I subject myself to the power of your spirit. The Lord, you will speak your word through me. Place your words on my lips to speak them today. Let them be words of encouragement, words of edification, words to transform the lives of anyone hearing me today. I pray in the name of Jesus that by the end of this service, we shall all be blessed to the glory of your name. Touch my tongue. Looks my tongue. Let me rightly divide your word of truth. At the end of the day, let all praise and glory be given to you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Can we please take our seats? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I have a very, I believe, short word to preach to all of us, including myself. And I believe that God will be a blessing to all of us. And the title of our message is, Believe God's Word. Amen. Believe God's Word. Somebody say, Believe God's Word. Believe if possible, you can type and say, Believe God's Word. It is very important for us to believe the Word of God. And this morning, I believe I'm speaking to some Christians. And I'm speaking to people who have received Jesus as their Lord and personal Savior. If you haven't, I give you the opportunity to do it now. Because this message is specifically to somebody who knows God and has a relationship with him. A lot of Christians these days, we believe in human beings more than God. In fact, most human beings now take place in our life instead of God. We believe in them. We believe what people say. We believe what they talk about. When someone makes you a promise, you believe that the person will fulfill that promise. But when it comes to our belief in God, when it comes to we holding on to God for him to perform or do what he has destined or stated or said in his word to do, we, we are always short of that. We find it very difficult for us to believe God. We find it very, very, very difficult. You see, God created human beings. The Bible says that for us to show forth his glory. By the end of the day, God also wants us to believe in for everything, especially when we become Christians. He wants us to believe in for every aspect of our lives. Hallelujah. But unfortunately, we don't have that kind of courage to keep believing God, especially when we are praying over things. We, we pray once, two, two times, and then we just give up. We feel like, oh, God is not responding to my prayers. God is not coming through for me. But instead of we holding on to the end until God makes a way, then we give up along the way. And a lot of Christians, a lot of children of God, that's why we, you know, we believe even doctors more than we believe God. Someone will go to the hospital, and then the doctor will say that you have this kind of condition. And the person will believe it. And the doctor will tell you that I'll give you this medication. You take this medication once or twice a day or whatever. And they believe that what the doctor is saying or what the doctor has said and the medication that he or she is giving to him or her to take 
it is going to work. In fact, some of these doctors are, are even unbelievers. They don't even know Jesus. But we tend to believe their words because we think they are specialists. We think they have experience. They have learned some things. So when they tell us, we just believe it. Some people can even go to the house and they will not be able to sleep because of a condition that a doctor has said they have. Maybe the doctor probably might have said that either your kidney is trying to dis or come against your something in your body and then they become worried. Certain jargons and you know, terminologies are used to describe certain conditions. And somebody can be thinking about this and be worried throughout the night. They tend to believe the word of a man more than the word of the God who created them. But this morning, God says, I should speak to all of us that it is time for us to believe him by his word. Our papa says that whatever God says, he means it. And whatever God means, he says them. We have to believe him by his word. Hallelujah. I heard a story of a man who went to hospital and a doctor told him that he has this kind of condition. A condition that, you know, he, he is not meant to live for some number of months. He came to the house and he became worried. Throughout the night, his wife and children were sleeping. He would go to their rooms, looking at them, and be saying to himself, so I'm going to die and leave all these things, leave my children, leave my property, leave everything and go. And by the following morning, the man has reduced in size. Because he was thinking. He believed the word of the doctor. He believed it. When the report came, he believed it. And they called him the, the following morning to say that, oh, we, had a, we did a mistake. The report we gave to you is not actually the report that is meant for you. So you see, he has believed the word of that doctor and as a result of that, he almost lost his life. That is what some of us Christians, we do. We believe the word of man more than the word of God. Why? Because we see human beings. We see them physically. But because we don't see God, we find it very, very difficult to believe in God. We find it very difficult. Because if you believe in God and the church is raising funds and God is laying on your heart that you should give a certain amount of money, you will not hesitate. I've come to the level of my work with God that whatever God says, so far as I have it, I will respond. That is it. I believe in God. The whole of last year, people were going through COVID and all kinds of losing jobs and things. If I share the kind of things God did in my life because of certain actions I took, I believe in him. I believe in this God. If he tells me whatever, I say, unless God doesn't speak, when he says it, I'm moving. Because I have tested and I've tried this God and I know that he's the God who never, ever fails. But a lot of us Christians, we don't believe in him. And it breaks the heart of God. This, month, this is just a word. We were praying on the seventh of this month. And then the Lord started speaking to me. Because I've been praying. I said, God, what do you want me to share with the church? I don't want to come and share my own thing. I want you to tell me exactly what you want me to share with the church. And he says that, tell my church to believe in me. And then he started sharing these things with me. Just on the seventh, I see Pastor Celia was leading by then. And he started sharing these things with me that my people must believe in me. They believe in doctors more than me. I made the doctor. The, in fact, the, the, the body the doctor is going to work on, I am the one who made the body. So I know exactly what I can do than the doctor. But we go, a, a, a doctor who doesn't even believe in God will tell you things and you believe. Another thing is that we tend to believe a pilot. You know, you commit your life into the hands of a pilot. So you're on the aircraft and the pilot tells you, we are, you know, uh, uh, British Airways um, uh, flight number 777, taking off from Heathrow or Gatwick or whatever, landing in Accra. We are flying at longitude and latitude, this and that. You don't understand any of them, but you believe the pilot. You believe that he will take you straight to Accra or wherever you are going. You believe it. So even when the pilot is saying something, there are times that some of the things they say, we don't even pay attention to them. Because we are just so excited that we want to get to our destination. We'll be calling people and telling them, you know what, I'm coming. I will arrive at Accra at 8 something. And you call people in Switzerland and you call people in Holland and tell them that this is the time I'm coming. You believe the one who is taking you there, but you don't believe in God. Am I speaking to somebody this morning? You don't believe in God. So you call people, you tell them, I am coming. Be at the airport to wait for me. When I get there, you just take me home. You believe it. So even if the pilot is somebody who is not meant to be the pilot on that day because of something I don't want to mention, you don't know. And you will still be in the plane. But you believe that you are going to get to your destination. I wonder the number of people 
before they boarded the plane, they thought that what could happen in the air? They don't think about that. They believe that this pilot, oh, he's experienced. But the point is that you don't even know the pilot from Adam. But you trust and you believe him. And you tell me that you know this God and you don't believe in him. So far as you say that you know God and you don't believe in, where, in his word, I am here to tell you you don't know him. You don't know him. Hallelujah. We have to get to the point that we believe God for everything. We believe him for everything. Hallelujah. And I say is that the word of a king is so powerful. The word of a king. Some people that we classify them as kings and some, you know, people with some certain level of experience and in class that we tend to believe their word. Their word is so powerful. Why? Because their word is backed by a certain level of authority. For instance, when the Queen of England calls me to say that I am going to bless you with one million pounds, which of course when she does, I'll give it to the church. <laughs> Hallelujah. If she calls me, I will believe it. Why? Because I know the authority and the power she carries. So there's no way I would doubt it. As soon as she says it, if she says I should come to her by eight, by five, I'm there. Why? I'm telling you the truth. Why? Because I believe in her. Why? I may not have any relationship with her, but I know the kind of power and the kind of authority she carries. So I will get to her house before the time ordained. So the word of a king, the word of people in authority is powerful. That is what we believe in. But most of it are known, the word of God, that is powerful than any other word, we tend not to believe in that word. So somebody will be reading the word of God. And the Bible says that, and God did this to Hannah, and God did that. And you are believing God for the seed of the womb. And you are like, oh, this one, these are just stories that we are reading. They can't be possible. So I have read Hannah over and over and over again. Ah, it's just a story. It can't be possible. It is time for us to believe God by his word. The Bible says that he is the same yesterday, he's the same today, he's the same forever. So it means that what he did yesterday, he's able to do today, he's more than capable to do again tomorrow. It's all about your belief. Once upon a time, the Bible says there was a man whose son had an issue, and the man came to Jesus, and then Jesus said, what do you want me? He said that I want you to pray for my son to be well. And Jesus said, do you believe? Immediately, the man looked into himself and he realized that, ha, ah, my belief is not up to that level. And he said, God, Jesus, I don't know if I truly believe, but help thou my own belief. Hallelujah. He said, help my own belief. Because he wanted something from Jesus. And he says that if the level of belief I need to have to receive it is not there, God, help me. This morning, may God help us to believe in him. In the name of Jesus. So like I said, the word of a king is very, very important. That is why it is taken seriously. We read the story of Daniel chapter 3 from verse 5 to 6. Can we please turn our Bibles there? I'm just, I, I, I'm just laying the foundation and then I'll share some few things if time permits us. Daniel chapter 3 from verses 5 to 6. Believing the word of God. May we come to the level to believe God's word against any other word we hear. You will go to the hospital and they will tell you that, okay, because of this, that, that, you can't conceive. Refuse it and say that I believe in the word of God. That all things are possible to him that believe. I believe in the word of God. And the Bible says that as soon as you hear the sound of the horn, the flute, the zeta, the lyre, the harp, the pipes, and all kinds of music, you must fall down and worship the golden statue that King Nebuchadnezzar has set up. And whosoever does not fall down and worship would immediately be thrown into the blazing fire. So the king gave a decree. He made an announcement that I want everybody to believe this word. At the sound of the trumpet, I want you to fall down and worship my golden image. And the consequence of you not obeying is that you are going to be thrown into fire. The fire is burning. You are going to throw into it. So the king, the word of the king is so important. And the Bible talks of the fact that the word of the king actually is backed by his supremacy or by the authority that he carries. So whenever you disobey the word of a king, you have not only disobeyed that word, you have also disobeyed his authority. Whenever we don't believe in God, we are not only not believing in his word, but we are also not believing in his power and capability to do. I hope you got what I said. When you don't believe in the word of God, the Bible says that he has exalted his word 
above himself. So it means that his word is not equal to his supremacy and authority. So whenever you don't believe in his word, you don't believe that even God carries power to do anything. You don't. That's why I said that if you don't believe the word of God, you don't believe God. You don't even believe that God exists. You can call yourself a Christian, but you don't believe God exists. You don't believe it. Because his word is power. His word is what makes him. If somebody gives you a promise through a word, of course it will come through a word, whether by writing or by, by speaking, that I'm going to do this for you. You believe that person because of the power and the authority back in the word. Like I said, the example of the, king, the queen. The queen gives me a promise. She says a word. Yeah, it is backed by the uh, supremacy. For instance, if a queer tells me that she's going to bless me with one million pounds, I would think twice. <laughs> Not that I don't think she doesn't have it, but the point is that I am looking at the authority backing what she has said. I hope you are getting me. And we serve this mighty God. We serve this great God. We serve this awesome God. And unfortunately, he, the God who created all things, and unfortunately, we don't believe his word. So you see somebody, like I said, has gone to the hospital and the doctor says something, come back to the house and we'll be crying. Where is your faith? You'll be crying. Where is your faith? So the Bible says, this is the word. So the word of the king is so important. In the Ecclesiastes chapter 8 from verse 3 to 4, it said that, be not hasty to go from his presence. Do not take your stand in an evil course. For he does whatsoever he pleases. And he says that for the word of the king is what? Supreme. Have you seen that in your, in your, in your Bibles? Ecclesiastes chapter 8 from verse 3 to 4. He says for the word of the king is what? He's supreme. So the word of God is supreme. The word of God is so powerful. The word of God carries authority. No wonder the Bible says he sends forth his word. Heals them and delivers them from that destruction. So the word of God is so powerful. That is why what God says to us, whether through the written word, or whether through the spoken word, or whether audibly God speaks something to you, it is time for us to believe it. Hallelujah. Is somebody being blessed today? It is time for us to believe it. Some people even believe constitutions and laws. They believe constitutions and laws. Some people even believe you know that when they overspeed on the motorway, they will receive a ticket. So when they are driving, they can speed. And then when they are getting to the cameras, they just try to slow down. Because they believe that. Some people also, you know, COVID and all the regulation. I'm just trying to, you know, link what I'm saying to things happening in our lives now. You see, COVID regulations and things, people will believe them. Social distancing and wearing of mask and all of that. People will do it. Why? Because they want to prevent or they want to, you know, they don't want to catch COVID and all of that. People believe it. They believe that. What they, and, and it's true. All right? Christians, we also believe in that. People believe all kinds of things and all kinds of people. But when it comes to God, we don't believe him. And that is very painful. I just want to share some few things with us this morning. Some of the things that we need to do in order for us to believe in God. In order for us to know that this God is the God who makes all things possible. Ah, it doesn't matter the thing that you are believing God to do for you. It doesn't matter the breakthroughs and the blessings you are believing him for. It doesn't matter the doors you want God to open for you. It is just a matter of you believing in his word. That he is more than able to do it. Hallelujah. So, the Lord taught me some four things that I want to share with the church this morning. I'm not sure if I'll be able to finish all of that. So the four E's, why we must believe God's word. The four E's. All these things came on the seventh. We're just praying our morning, you know, glory. is a glory hour, isn't it? And then the Lord started teaching me. The four E's. Very, very important. So when you summarize all of them, there might be other, other things, but they're all summarizing to this. And it is time for us to believe God. It is time for us to believe God. Believe God in the new dimension. One of the things that God expects us to is to believe him. Believe him for the supernatural. Believe him for the mighty breakthroughs. Doors open. Believe God for them. Hallelujah. The first E that I want us to look at is endowment. That talks about his omnipotency. Are you with me this morning? The Lord just taught me all this. Thing. Endowment is omnipotency. Endowment has to do with, you know, you believe in people who are endowed with the capacity and the ability to perform, isn't it? Yes. So endowment has to do with somebody having the capacity and the capability and the doability to be able to do. 
Hallelujah. So when the person gives you the promise, you look at the person's capability and you say that, ah, what he has said, ah, what that red ocean is going to do. Hallelujah. That is the thing. So the, uh, no, God, God has power. That's why he's omnipotent. No power on earth can be compared to the power of God. Nothing on earth can be compared to our God. People, it is time for us to take away unbelief from our heart. It is time for us to overcome everything that brings unbelief on our way. This morning, I'm speaking to somebody. You have been believing God for the seed of the womb. And the Lord has been telling you, you and your, and your spouse, to be fasting and praying on certain days. You have not been doing it because you don't believe God will give you the seed. Because of what the doctor is saying. That, ah, you see, you people, the kind of situation I'm seeing, I don't think that you do, you'll be able to console. You have believed it. The Bible says, whose report will you believe? For we shall do what believe the report of the Lord. I have come to a point in my life, no matter what anybody says, if it is not the word of God, I refuse it. I refuse it. It is not part of my equation. I refuse it. Because I only have to believe God's word. Amen. This one, I'm just telling you someone's faith this morning. If you have put down the, your, your, the, your antenna of belief and faith in God, I want you to take it back on. So that you can connect back to heaven. Because Hebrews chapter 11 tells us that although without faith, it is what impossible to please God. All the people who work with God, the Bible says, and they did that in faith. And Daniel silenced the mouth of lions in faith. All of them by faith, by believing in God, by trusting in God. So you believe in the person's capability to do the ability for the person to do something for you. Look at the God that we serve. Don't you know that God has the power to do all things for you? If he's the one who has power than any other person on the, the omnipotency of God, then he tells you that he has power over cancer, he has power over diseases, he has power over sicknesses, he has power over affliction, he has power over poverty, he has power over anything that is not of God. He has power over them because he created and made all things. Hallelujah. This morning, may God lift our faith up in him. May God stay up our belief in him. That you no more doubt God in the name of Jesus. When you read Luke chapter 5 from verses 1 to 6. Luke 5 verses 1 to 6. It tells us of an interesting story. People go to the doctor because they believe that the doctor has some abilities. Can be able to do some things for them. And they believe it. But we don't believe God. We don't believe God. This morning, may God change our mindset in the mighty name of Jesus. Luke chapter 5 from verses 1 to 6. And the Bible says that, and it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Genizareth and saw two sheep standing by the lake. But the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. And he entered into one of the sheep which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. Now when he had finished speaking, he said unto Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your net for a drought. And Simon answering said unto him, Master, in other words, Lord, we have toiled all night and we have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. These are experienced fishermen. I don't know if you have gone fishing before. Or you have seen people going fishing before. I think those of us from Ghana, uh, like Papa used to say, <laughs> forgive me Papa, those people around you know, the seaside there, those, those guys there, when you see them going for sh- uh, 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 fishing, and they, 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 <laughs> you have no idea. The language and the shouting and the screaming, you see the scene, you see that these are fishermen. The Bible says that Simon and his brethren, they went for fishing. They did what we call all night fishing and they couldn't catch anything. The guys were so disappointed. The guys were so frustrated and they came down washing their net and here comes Jesus and tells them, can you borrow me one of your sheep? If it is one of us, that after you've done everything, the little that you have, God is saying that give it to me. You be like, God, you don't know what you are talking about. Some of us, when God directs us to sow a seed to the church, we squeeze the money until the money starts to cry and to scream that, leave me alone. It's a Peter situation. Hallelujah. The man will be crying, that, I belong to God, I belong to me. He said, no, you belong to me, and you'll be pushing the money down. May God help us today. 
in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I have realized that when you give to God, my brothers and sisters, he will give it to you back more than you ever expected. That is a God that we serve, unless you don't believe it. And I always tell people, especially when I'm doing uh, you know, our burial class, I tell people that if you don't believe God will bless you, don't give your tithe. Because if you give, you will not receive anything. I say, if you don't believe it, don't do it. Because you must believe it, so you must receive the blessing that comes from it. If you don't believe it, it's as if you are coming to throw it to God and says that, you know, I have to do it because religiously I have to fulfill that. No, it must be done by faith. So you shall receive more and give more to God. That is how it works. And we come to the level that whenever we give to God, we are not giving to man, we are giving to the almighty God. Amen. So you don't say, oh, because of the building project, I'm just looking at, when I give, no, 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 no. We've passed that stage already. New dimension, you don't think that way. When you, when you are thinking that way, you are in the old dimension. We have to pray for you, baptize you, anoint you, dip you in the oil seven times, and then you'll be revived. <laughs> Hallelujah. Is somebody being blessed today? New dimensions. We don't think about me sowing this. No, no, no. You do it so far as God has said it. When you do that in faith, you will see it. I'm telling you, I have testimonies that time will not permit me to share. Mind-blowing testimonies. Mind-blowing testimonies. Hallelujah. Amen. Ah, some people are laughing here. We thank God for laughter. Hallelujah. So the Bible says that they believe the word of the Lord. Peter said, Father, Master, we have told on that we have done everything. We have moved to the length and the breadth of the sea. In fact, we have used our physiology, what we studied under our Father. The skills of fishing is called fish, physiology. So you go to school, you'll be taught how to fish. He said, we've used all of it, all the techniques, all the ability. We've done everything. We didn't catch anything. Look at our net. They are empty. And then Jesus, you've come to tell them to give you one of their boat for you to sit on to preach. They are at a better position to tell Jesus whatever they can say to him. Get that from here. Don't you see how? Because, because you know, the fishmongers, they are around. Try to that they can make some money. And you can imagine washing their knee. Hopelessly. No faith. Nothing. Heartbroken. Jesus comes to them. Simon just gave the And then also he told them, push the, 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 the ship a little further so I can sit on So they are now going to use another energy to carry the thing. They brought it out of the water. Now they are taking it back. They were looking at ah, Jesus. You, yeah. but the Bible says that they obey. As if Jesus didn't know that these people have come from fishing and they haven't caught anything. After he preached to the people, he turned to Peter and said, "Peter, can you launch into the deep?" Peter looked at Jesus and said, "Jesus, you don't know what you are saying. Do you know the skills I have in fishing?" If it, we, we, we award people PhD in vision, I should be the number one. Because I know all the skills. In fact, we did all night fishing. Once some people are doing all night prayers, they are doing all night fishing. They couldn't catch even one single fish. But they said, you know what? Some time ago, I saw you do some things that blew my mind. I saw some wonderful work that you did some few chapters before. Therefore, I believe your word. Nevertheless, add thy word. Not at my word. Not at any other person's word. At thy word. Why? Because Peter believed the supremacy and the authority and the capability of Jesus that Jesus is able to do something for them. So he said, at thy word, I'm going to launch out into the deep. And they went. And the Bible said they caught fishes. Like our papa said, Jesus told them to cut the nets. But they did only one. And the Bible said now their net began to break. May we believe the word of the Lord. That will not just read God's word as a storybook. Like our Bible planner. Some people are just reading like a storybook. It doesn't impact their spirit. It, it is not meaningful. Nothing is happening to them. They are just the same way dry as they are. They read the word of God. Some of the things that they read is like action movie. And Jesus saw the blind man. And the blind man said, Jesus, have mercy on me. And Jesus healed the blind man. It's just a story. It's just action movie. What an action movie. Like the story that we see, the video, action movie. But in your life, you have not had any kind of encounter with him. That you can believe and say that he did it for this one. He can do it for me. No. Don't just read the word of God. I don't just read God's word. I read it with understanding. Whatever I do, and I say, I tell Holy Spirit, this one, I don't understand. What, what is, and then he began to share things with me. The empowerment of God. The omnipotency of God. When we understand this, nothing shall be impossible for us. Nothing. 
I'm challenging somebody this, but nothing. No matter what is ahead of you, the project ahead of you, humanly speaking, it will be impossible. But with God, the Bible says that nothing is what impossible. It's at that word. So, they believe the word of the Lord. This morning, my question for all of us is that, do we believe in the capabilities of God? Do we believe it? Do we believe that God is able to do it? Do we believe that God is able to turn our situation around? Do we believe it? It's a question that I want you to find an answer to. Do we believe it? You go into yourself and start asking yourself this question. Who is God to be? What can God do? How powerful is God? How awesome and majestic is God? Ask yourself these questions. When you find the answers to them and you believe that I can believe God now for that miracle and blessing, then you're on your way to receiving it. Hallelujah. So we believe it. And the mighty chapter 8 from verses 5 to 13, the Bible talks of the Roman centurion or the Roman soldier who came to Jesus. Hallelujah. He came to Jesus. He ran to Jesus. Let's read it, please. Matthew chapter 8 from verses 5 to 13. I believe I'm blessing somebody this morning. Yes. Hallelujah. He says that when Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him. That is a, a Roman soldier who was, you know, soldiers under him. Asking for help. He said, Lord, he said, my servant lies as, at home paralyzed, suffering terribly. Jesus said unto him, shall I come and heal him? And he replied, Lord, you don't even have to worry yourself. Me, myself, we are soldiers. We, don't, we move from one place to the other. So I don't even have a roof under me. So don't worry yourself at all. But I want you to do one thing for me. Look at what he said. But just say what? The word. And you say it together. Just say what? The word. So the centurion told Jesus, Jesus, I know you're a busy man like the way I'm busy. We move from place to place. I mean, one of our brothers here who used to be in the army, he will tell you. You know, soldiers, they move from one place to the other. They said that we, we are just moving everywhere. We know it. I told, even roof, I don't have a roof on my head. We are just lying under some tree somewhere. And I heard that you are just in Capeno. So I ran to come and ask you to heal my servant for me. Why didn't he take the servant to the hospital? But he came to Jesus. He said, but just say what? The word. And my servant will be healed. Who? What kind of faith and belief is this? He said, Jesus, I don't need you to come to my house. He said, for I myself... I am a man under what authority? With soldiers under me. So for him to say he's also a man under authority, that he believes that Jesus is also a man of what authority? He said, I tell this one, go, and he goes. And the other one, come, and he comes. And I say to myself, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard it, he was amazed and said to those following him, Ah, I have not found in Israel such great faith. So it means that we have levels of faith. We have low faith. We have small faith. We have little faith. We have great faith. He said, I have not seen such great faith. Not in Israel. I said to you that many will come from the east and west and will take their places at the feast with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the kingdom, the subject of the kingdom will be thrown out, outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then look at what Jesus said. Jesus said to the centurion, go, let it be done. Just as you did what you have believed. Hallelujah. He said, just as you have done what you have believed. The man came to Jesus and said, I am a man under authority. I know what it means to be a man under authority. When I say to this one, he, he go, he goes. This one come, he come. This one do this, he does it. Therefore, I know that Jesus, I don't need you to come to my house. Because in fact, I don't even have a chair to give you when you come. We are sitting on some mat somewhere. I don't even have anything to give you to, to, to sit on. Just speak your word. The only thing I came for is for you to speak the word. And I believe my servant will be well. And the Bible says that when Jesus spoke, the man believed it. And by the time he got home, he was told that your servant is well. And the Bible says when he looked at the time, it was exactly the time that Jesus said, your servant is well. He believed the word. Someone came to a pastor. And he said, Pastor, I have come to sow this seed because I have a problem. And the pastor said, go, it is well. And the guy went broken hearted. He said, I have come to give you this. I believe I, I was expecting you to lay your hands, lay your feet, lay your body, pour oil on me, pour everything on me, and prophesy and declare. Then I will know that you are prayed. But the pastor only said, go, it is well. He didn't believe it. Hallelujah. 
So people want pastors to do some spiritual gymnastics, and that's why a lot of people have been deceived. That's why a lot of people have been deceived. Because when you come, let's say you come to our papa, and the papa say it is well. Oh, papa, this uh, 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 this prayer. What is this prayer going to do for me? I wanted to just pour some oil, bring a gallon of oil, pour it on me, prophesy, declare, break you. De- then I'll believe it. That's why some people are selling oil. And they're selling water. Because they want to see spiritual gymnastics and acrobatics. They want to see them on the pulpit. Then people will believe it. Hallelujah. Amen. We have part that stage of all these gymnastics and all these uh, uh, karate and things. We have part that stage. New dimension. The new dimension brings, you know, it, it, it brings a certain kind of mindset. Hallelujah. A certain kind of mindset that you believe in God beyond any reasonable shadow of doubt. The Bible said the man believed the word of the Lord and he said, Jesus, this is only the thing I'm looking for. Your word, that is the only thing I needed. I don't want you to come and lay your hands on my servant. I, want, I don't want you to come and pray for me. Only your word. This morning, may we believe the word of the Lord. So you realize that the man left everything he was doing. He left his duty. He left his servant. He left everything and came to see Jesus. So it means that he created the time. Hallelujah. He created the time. Some of us don't have time for God. We don't have time to pray. We don't have time to read the word of God. How can you be? If you don't know the words of somebody, how can you know when the person is speaking? There are some people, you have known them to the point that when they write a letter, and even they change their handwriting, you can tell that this letter, the wedding and the sentence and the construction is from Elsie. You can just tell it straight away. You don't need descending. You don't need any prophecy, word of knowledge. You can just tell. Hallelujah. That's why some people, when they speak on the phone, it doesn't matter how cold has affected their voice, you can tell that this is Arabic speaking. You can tell. Hallelujah. So he created time to come and see Jesus. He left everything. Some of us are so busy. And our bishop says that if you are busy to pray and to seek the faith of them, you are really busy indeed. You are really busy. Busy. Even our morning glory. Some people will be praying and they'll be, and they'll be snoring. <laughs> you have not created a time. This morning I'm just speaking to the church. Papa, I beg you, please give me. <laughs> you have not. That's no ring. You have not created a time. You are joking. <laughs> Hallelujah. One day I think somebody did that and then it was muted. Disturbing all of us. If you are ready to pray, pray. If you are not ready to pray, don't pray. That is the thing. Create the time. Intentionally create the time to seek the face of God in prayer and supplication. So the man came. So in other words, the time that he created could be a time of prayer coming to wait on God. He ran to come to Jesus. And the only thing he was looking for is the word. The second thing the man did was that he trusted in the ability and in the capability of Jesus to heal his servant. So it means that Jesus became his only source and hope. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, these are all things that the Lord taught me. I've read all these scriptures and things before, but he started talking to me and teaching me these things. He said, Jesus became his only source of hope. Nothing more. So when he was coming... Other people might be saying, the soldiers might be saying, do you know if Jesus doesn't even know you? In fact, there are other people with similar situations, he hasn't even mind. And you, he would, ah, but he would tell them, don't worry, I'm going. I'm going. He's my only source. He could have taken the servant to the hospital, but he came direct to Jesus. May Jesus become our only source of hope in this life and nothing more. Hallelujah. If you are listening to me today and your prayer life is just on the mountain, in the valley kind of prayer. May you receive a revival. In the name of Jesus. Because some of us, the things we are believing God for, it will only come through prayer. You can't live a day without praying and reading the word of God. You are not a child of God. You you can't hear your father speaking to you every day. I wonder how I can live with my children in the house and they will not hear my voice a day. I don't know. Unless maybe I have trouble or I'm not in the house. But so far as I'm in the house, they'll be doing something down and I'll shout, Judah, stop it. He has heard my voice. So you can't live a day without hearing the voice of your father. Without reading his word. And you say you're a Christian, you're a believer. Our church, we are a Bible-believing church. That's why nobody can stand on our pulpit and say anything. Or anything anyhow. Because we are 
taught the word. We know the word. By the time you are saying it, we know, ah, 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 this one, this one, this one. That's in my scripture. The guys will say this one, oh, bad way. <laughs> Hallelujah. It means that, how can I say it in English? <laughs> it means that you've gone the wrong way totally. You error. Stop it. Hallelujah. Yeah. I remember some years ago in Ghana, I went to a church to, they were doing the program and they invited me to come and play the keyboard. When I went there, they have this pastor. He said he's a prophet. It's like a small church. He said, a brand here, like, young man, come let me pray for you. I looked at the man and I said, if I get there, I'll take the oil and I'll pray for you and deliver that demon out of you. <laughs> I didn't mind him. So, yeah, aren't you coming? I didn't mind. I thought after church, he would come to say, he could tell the anchor by which I'm praying. There are certain things I don't take. I looked at him like this. As soon as we finished, I left. And I said, I'm not coming there again. Because I could tell that he was deceiving the people. He was deceiving them. Look, because we are taught the word of God, we know our spirits are very sensitive. Yes. We can tell when somebody is telling the, the lie. We can tell it. And when they are saying the truth, ah, it just sits down in our spirit. And we can tell. Hallelujah. So the man believed that Jesus was his only source of hope. Hallelujah. I think I'm making some people to laugh, but it's all part of the preaching. Hallelujah. It makes the preaching very exciting. We are the children of our papa and our bishop. Hallelujah. That same kind of humor is there. Amen. Hallelujah. So, Jesus became his only source of hope. Is Jesus your only source of hope? He said, whose report are you going to believe? The report of that unbelieving doctor? I'm not against doctors, please. But I'm saying that there are times that some people who don't even know the capabilities of your God, they tell you things and you believe it. And God will be in heaven, heartbroken. And say, look at my children. They can't even believe in me. They can't even trust in me. They can't even depend on me. We will receive a new grace today. Yeah. And then also, he understood the authority of Jesus. Kadabushi He understood the authority of Jesus. He said, I'm a man under authority. So it means that he also knew, how could you say to Jesus that you're a man under authority? It means that he knows that Jesus is also a man in authority and spiritually is able to command things. So he was convicted. There was that kind of conviction that, ah, this man is a man of authority. Look at me. I tell this servant, come and he come. This one, go, go. The same way Jesus can command that sickness to leave and it will go. Amen. It will struggle. That is the thing. He was convicted. When he came to Jesus, he said, Jesus, my servant lies at home. He's sick. He's just about to die. Do something. He didn't even ask Jesus to come. Jesus said, you go, I will come. And he said, no, don't worry yourself. I don't want you to come. Because in fact, we are leaving where we are to another place. So you know, the only thing I need is that just speak your word. So the word of God came out, backed by his authority, traveled in the spirit, entered into their house, wherever they are, and then touched the servant. And he was fine. Wow. What kind of grace is this? He casted a demon and the people say, and the priest and they, and they say, where is this grace and anointing from? That is the kind of God we serve, people. In fact, Jesus is God in the flesh. That there's nothing impossible. I don't know what you are going through. I don't know the struggles. I don't know the pain. I don't know the afflictions. I don't know the financial struggles. I don't know that thing. But if you can only believe God for him to come through for you. My brothers and sisters, I'm telling you, God is going to do it. Hallelujah. He's going to do it. And then the next thing, or the last thing that you, could, you can tell from the story of this man is that he came to Jesus with his own belief. Hallelujah. We are still on the first point. So maybe another time when Papa releases me, I will come and finish the, the other three. So he came with his own belief. He didn't come to depend on the belief of Jesus. He came with his own belief in his back. So when he was coming, he was coming with that kind of belief, faith in his heart. I am coming, I am coming. People would have discouraged him. There are a lot of us, we have the zeal to do something. As soon as someone comes to say something, and then, ah, the whole thing is really like, oh, I can't do it again. And you start thinking twice. Meanwhile, God has placed something in your spirit. Start that business. Enroll on that course. Do this thing. Do that. You were burning with fire and zeal. If that fire could consume you, it would have even consumed you. The fire was too much in you. And if somebody came to discourage you a bit and you feel like, oh, no. I think obstacles. I can't do it. Let me just leave it. Who said that God is not able to do it? Hallelujah. 
That is why when God made the promise to Abraham, the Bible says he couldn't swear by any other thing. So he did what? He swore by what? Himself. In other words, we're telling Abraham, I am the God of all power and no authority. If you believe in me that what I've said, I will do it, I will do it. That's at that point when Sarah, you know, the whole thing changed. And then Ishmael came through. You could realize that Abraham was still, you know, he still believed in God. And the Bible said to the point that when God told him, go and sacrifice your son, your only son. Sometimes when you read the word of God, eh, when you read God's word, if you don't take care, you can miss certain things out. When God said your son, he mentioned your what? Only son. Why did he say your only son? Because the only son in the sight of God that Abraham had was Ishmael, the promised one. Sorry, Isaac. Ishmael came along the way. But the one with the covenant was Isaac. That's why he said your only son. So Abraham also perceived and he understood that God is talking about Isaac. And the Bible says in Hebrews that when God told him to go and sacrifice Isaac, he didn't think twice. In fact, I believe he didn't even tell Mary. Sorry, he didn't even tell Sarah. Now Sarah would have said, Abraham, do you know the pain I went through before giving birth to Isaac? What do you mean by what you are doing? I think you are suffering from dementia. It is trying to worry your brain. So you are telling me God said you should go and sacrifice our son. What do you mean by that? Can you put my son away? Do you know the pain I went through? Hey, you don't understand. How am I going to conceive again, give birth to another child? But Abraham went. On the way going, he was singing. I have joy in my heart. Deep, deep down in my heart. I believe he was singing that song. Going to sacrifice his son. He didn't take one. And Hebrews made that to understand that Abraham believed God that even if he killed his son, God would raise him back to life. Oh my God. What kind of belief? So if I kill my son, if I use the knife on his throat, God will bring him back to life. That is the faith Abraham had. <laughs> he had that faith. So when they were going, their son said, Father, this is the fire, the wood, where is the light? He said, God himself will provide. Don't worry, my son. Why he was saying God himself will provide? It was, he was prophesied, but in, in his own human kind of understanding, the son, he couldn't tell the son, you are the lamb. The son would have run away. Should I hate me? Eh? <laughs> it's gone. Who's in both? Come and see Papa Abraham running after Isaac. Ah, it will be a marathon of the century. <laughs> Hallelujah. Where? Wow. <laughs> so he didn't tell him. And when they got there, and the boy, the father said, in fact, my son, I didn't tell you, but you are the lamb. The son could have said, oh, daddy, why did you deceive me? But he didn't say that. If he did, people would have recorded that. The father had to bind him and put him on the altar. He just obeyed. All this while, God was looking at the heart of Abraham. If that belief is there, Abraham, can you trust me? Look at the age you gave birth. Can you believe me that I can command children again to come through you? So God was testing him. After God said, oh, Abraham, I've seen your face. I, I've now seen it. In blessing, I'm going to bless you. In case, I will curse anybody that curse you. And God now begin to pronounce blessings upon him. Because God said, I can trust that man now. Some of us, God only wants to see your belief so he can trust you with some money. The other day, he was teaching me something. He says that, see, Everything in this world, he made them. In fact, the money that we are all running after, the things that were used to make that money, he made it. And he says that if I can only trust you to be a good steward of the things that I made, I will pass them through you. If I can only trust you. If I can only trust you. Most of the time when I'm bathing, that is when he speaks. He says, if I can only trust you, that you can be a good steward of the things I've given you, and then when I say, give to this one, do this, you run and do it. I will pass things through you. This one, it could be the same word that God is telling you. That it is time for you to believe him. When he says, do something, just obey and do it. I believe some of you, God is impressing things on you how to do for the church. Run and do it. And after you have done it, say, God, I've done my part. It is left with you to do your part. That's how I do it. There are times I converse with him. We chat. I do it. I say, God, I've done it. You said to do this. I've done it. God is your. If that is delaying, I just go back. I say, God, but you said this thing. I can be driving. I can be talking to him. I say, you said this thing, and I've done it. So, Lord, move. And he has moved and shown him. That's why my faith has got into a point. Nothing can take it away. No, 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 no. The new dimension. We've entered into new dimensions that if you don't have faith, you struggle. If you can't believe in God, you struggle. Because you will not receive anything until you believe. So somebody, I still feel in my spirit, this dawn, when we're praying, 
I say feel it. When I started, I said it. You are believing God for the seed of the womb. You are believing God. You are believing God. It's been a while, long time. Not one, not two. Quite a number of, of, of couple. You are believing God for the seed of the womb. God is saying that go yourself together. Pray every day. Some days in the week. Just set yourself as, and fast and pray and believe me. I'm going to do it. Doctors have done everything. They say you are fine. But the thing is not coming. It means that the supernatural hand of God must come in. So two, three days, every week, pray. You see the mighty hand of God. You will see the mighty. Believe God. God gave to Hannah. It got to a point that Hannah felt like, ah, I can't hold it again. Is it Pinana or whatever their name is? <laughs> Trying to mock me and do all kinds of things. So she was moved. Hallelujah. There are certain names in the Bible. Pardon me, eh? There are certain names in the Bible. When you come under the unction and you want to pronounce, you need a certain kind of accent to be able to, you know, really pronounce them. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. So she was now moved. The day they went to Shiloh, she said to herself, I am either coming out with the son or aware that God is saying, I'm going to bless you or I'm going to remain there forever. So she broke all protocols. Where women are not supposed to go, she went there. And Eli, the priest came and said, Madam, early this morning you're already drunk. And then Hannah turned to her and said, Priest, today you've missed it. You didn't see well. I am pouring out my heart unto God. The burden of my heart I'm pouring out to him. And Hannah was determined that until God tells me I'm going to bless you with the son, I'm not leaving. And she was specific. She said, I needed the son. She didn't eat the whole day. And she was there communing, communicating with God, having communion with God. And the Eli said, go, woman. Your wish is granted. Hannah didn't say that, Eli, I don't want to hear from you. I want God to speak direct. She just believed the word. She came, and the Bible said, and God remembered Hannah. And she conceived. Can you be believe in this God? And after that, she gave birth to other children. This one, this is just the simple word that God wants me to bring to you. It is time for us to do what? Believe in it. In Job chapter 42 verse 2, the last scripture, Job 42 verse 2. Job went through all kinds of things and look at what he said about our God. The omnipotency of our God. Are you shut The capabilities of our God. Job 42 verse 2, he said, I know that you can do all things. No purpose of yours can be thwarted or can be overturned. He said, I know. I'm convinced. I'm convinced. Beyond any doubt. That you can do all things. Do you believe God can do all things? You can do all things. It's not some things. Not few things. He can do all things. I heard somebody saying that what God cannot do does not exist. If God can do it, he doesn't have a name. So far that thing has a name, oh my God, God can do it. So I know you can do all things. The man lost everything within the day. Have you come to that state before? He lost everything. This one will come. Oh, we are just at the, on, on the field and this happened. This one will come. Everything within the day. And to add, uh, 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 how do you call it? Uh, is it sore to injury? Eh? He had boils all over his body. And his miserable comfort, the friends came and they said, ah, it is because you have sinned. You see? You see? We've been telling you. We've been telling you. You see? You've been sacrificing every time for your children. But even your sins. Aha, it has exposed you. But the Bible says he maintained his integrity in God. After God restored everything, he said, that I know that God can do all things. May our faith get to that level that you know he can do everything. Hallelujah. Our time is gone. I just want us to be up and pray this morning briefly. In the name of that God, stir up my faith. The other three points, I haven't even finished this one, but we'll share that another time by the grace of God. I believe somebody is blessed today. Believe in the capabilities of God, the omnipotency of God. He has the power to do. I want you to pray for yourself this morning that God will stir faith within you. He will quicken you. He will stir something with you. You will believe it that you have ever believed him. You will trust him that you have ever trusted him. In the name of Jesus the Christ. Kadamo ezehete. Amen. 
In the name of Jesus, I believe God for that job. Believe God for that business. Believe God for that breakthrough. Some of you, you want to start some business. Believe God for it. It doesn't matter on the business plan that the magnitude of it is able to do it. He's looking for people who will believe him. I believe your word. Help down my unbelief. Tava, yo shotan di parota, en teleme zaku kapoya, a teleme zuparo shanda, en toleme kuparando, en teleme zapan tukaya, le perota, bless people with the seed of the womb, bless them with miracles, a yo shanda as we believe, open the heavens, oh God, pour out your blessing now, a godi emeze, veli azute emoshekea, and teleme kantanda la papa. E panda dele me kapaya, antele me kato yo shanda, intala bapaya. Yanda dele le me ka, araba pa shanda ta, atala bapiri anda, ele me kaparu adeya, antele me kiboro bosha, me tele me katusa, intele me katara pa, atala bapaya atala pa. In the name of Jesus. Can we look at this scripture? Romans chapter 4, verse 21. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Romans 4, 21. Oh, Romans 4, 21. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You can do all things. You can do all things by faith. You never will lose the battle. Oh, can we sing it together? Can we sing it together? Oh, you can do, you can do all. Ah, I feel his glory. You can do, Lord. Do all things by faith. Oh, you never lost a battle. Oh, my God. Oh, I know. Ah, you never. One more time. You can do. You can do all things. Oh, you can do. You can do all things. Oh, you never lost a battle. It's only people who have strength. Who are capable. They are the people who never lose a battle. That's like one more time. You can do all. Oh, you can do all. You can do all things. Because you never lost a battle. But you never lost a battle. I know. I know. Oh, you never. One more time for the last time. You can do. You can do all. Lift your voice. Lift your voice, you can do, Lord. Yes, Lord, we declare by hey, never lost a battle. Oh, I know, I know, oh, you never fail. Amen. Romans 4 21. It says that the be part and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was also what able to perform. Fully persuaded. Full persuasion. It means that you move to that level that no matter the wind and the waves, they are not going to divert your attention. And your focus on the full persuasion. He was persuaded. Hallelujah. This morning, may God give us the grace to be fully persuaded in him. That we will not look at the winds and the waves and the things blowing around us, but our focus and attention will be on him until I receive this miracle. I'm not going to stop praying. I'm not going to stop waiting on God. Don't, don't stop serving God when the blessing comes. Because one blessing will open back our doors for you. Keep serving Him. Keep doing it. Keep believing in God. Keep trusting in Him. In the name of Jesus. Just lift your voice one more time. You can do all things, Lord. Sing of the mighty and the omnipotency of our God. Oh, you, you can do all things. 
Yes, Lord, you can do all. It's your declaration this morning to your God. Oh, you never lost a battle. He has never lost a battle. Ah. Oh, I know, I know you. Are. Hey, you can do, you can do all. This is a pronouncement as a check. You can do, Lord, you can do all. Never lost a battle. Never lost a battle. Oh, I know. Oh, you can do all things, Lord. You can do. Makadaya mashata. You can do all things, Lord. All things, but ah, you never lost a battle. He can do all things. There is nothing you can do, Lord. We thank you. Thank you for doing it for Christ Church International. Thank you for doing it for members of the church. Thank you, Lord. We believe in omnipotency, Lord. Hey, Oh, open the wombs now, Lord. Let wombs be open now. Bring your blessings now. Oh, closed doors be open now. You've never lost the battle. Do something for a project as a church. Oh, my God. The song says that he can do all things. He can do all things but fail. It means that the only thing he cannot do is to fail. Because he has never lost a battle. <laughs> oh my God. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your church. Thank you for this word that you have given to us. That because you have never lost a battle, and you can do all things, when we put our hope in you, you will do it for us. It may look as if it is impossible. But Lord, I believe our project as a church all over the world is possible because you can do all things. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise and give you glory this morning in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. We just want to take our offerings. And I want you to give to the glory of God. Amen. Get an offering and give to the Lord. You are not giving it to man. You are giving to God. In Jesus' name. He can do all things. I feel the song ringing in my spirit. I believe it's a word of encouragement for our church. That God can do all things. Hallelujah. Ah, leke siba o kadiba haya. And also, I want to plead with everyone listening to us online. We have a building project we are undertaking. I want to plead with you. Please support the church. The details will come on the screen. Please help us our building project. You can give us a thousand. You can give us five hundred. You can give us more. Ten thousand, twenty thousand. We have up to the end of February. Please help us. We need it. We are building a sanctuary to the glory of God. That will outlive generations if Jesus tarried. So God bless you all. Members of the church, please, I want to encourage all of you. Please give to the glory of God. In Jesus' mighty name. Shall we invite the choir to lead us?
never lost a battle. The mountains are the feet of them who preach good news. Good news. And I've seen peace proclaiming news of happiness that I can't bring. I can't bring. Let's sing again. How lovely
very blessed. I don't know about you. Believe in God's word. That's the message. That his message was not somebody was snoring. His message was believe in God's word and it's instructive. Hallelujah. Let's major on the major. Believe in God's word. That's the message. Thank you very much, Pastor Daniel. We've been blessed. May God continue to increase the grace upon your life and anoint you and put his word in your mouth. And you, may you be a blessing to many in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Let's show our appreciation to him one more time. Hallelujah. 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 You want to take there is liberty in the house, in the house of in the presence of the Lord. There is the fullness of joy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We want to take our announcements quickly for the coming week. We've got the Arrows of Destiny, which is the Children's Ministry of Christ Church International, having their service this morning at 11.30 a.m. via the Zoom platform. Please, 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 let's get them prepared. Let's get them ready. They are coming to church. Let's get them dressed up. Let's get their gadgets ready, their notepads, their Bibles, and let them have a very powerful time in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Then we have our midweek teaching service um, this coming Wednesday. The time is 7 p.m. prompt. Invite a friend, invite a colleague. We have been thoroughly blessed. The Lord has been speaking to us through diverse means and been lifting up, up with his words that have been, been a blessing to us. So be, be, be encouraged and be sure to send the invite out. Invite a colleague, invite a friend, and make sure we are all tuned this coming, this coming Wednesday for a powerful service. It will be streamed on YouTube, Christchurch HQ, or on uh, Facebook, Christchurch International. Make sure you are present this, this uh, Wednesday. And so to, uh, also to re-echo um, what uh, Pastor Daniel mentioned about our ongoing fundraising uh, project, um, the deadline, we are doing it in phases, the deadline for phase two, uh, phase three, I should say, is on the 28th of February, so we've got a very short time to, today is 14, so we've got exactly 14 days to go to the deadline. But our God is capable of doing all things. There's nothing too difficult for our God. We just have to obey and we have to believe God's word. Let's respond. If you have pledged, please do well to redeem. If you haven't pledged, be, be directed by or be led by the Lord to pledge. And God, your life will never be the same again. You can see the details um, via the uh, various um, streams uh, on YouTube. You should see the link there to the Google form. Please do well to, um, you know, Click on it and then um, make sure you, you, you be a blessing and you support us. Amen. Then we are back again on Sunday for our victory service. The time is 9 a.m. prompt. If you have been blessed today, don't be selfish. Encourage a friend and a co uh, colleague. Invite friends and family. Let them also be part of the service. Amen and amen. This is the end of the announcement. And we'd like to welcome Pastor Daniel Nikwe back. Okay, let's receive him. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen and amen. Amen. We thank God. We bless him. Can we please be up as we take the benediction? There is only one name. only one name with power to save with power to save with power to save with power to save one more time there is only one name above all other names there is only one name with power to say. Yes, Lord, He's the living God we serve with power to say. Oh, we declare our God is a holy champion. Yes, Lord, the only potent. God, no one like you forevermore. Forevermore. We love you, Jesus. We declare our God. Hey, yeah. The only champion. Forever we praise you your name. Receive all the glory.
the only champion. He's champion. He's champion. He for us. Whatever our hand touches to do will be a blessing. I pray that Lord, every one of us we've heard this word. Let this word be a blessing to us. Let this word open doors for us. Let this word stir up our faith and believe in you as the only one true living God. As our only hope and source. As the only God that when we look up to, we shall not be put to shame. Thank you Lord for your word. Now I pray that the Lord bless us all. The Lord keep us. The Lord make his face shine upon us and be gracious unto us. The Lord heal you of all your sicknesses and diseases and all your afflictions. We command them out of your bodies. We thank God and we give him glory that this week will be a week of blessing, a week of favor, a week of good news. This week, this month, this year, and the years ahead in Jesus' mighty name, we are praying with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. Can we please share the grace together? of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. You are blessed with an irrevocable blessing to increase and to influence. Amen. I think one of these days we need to organize a, a worship session. Eh? We will come online. All of us, people will join and we will worship God. Yes. Two hours non-stop. I will speak to Papa about that. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Can we sing it? Amen, 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 amen. It is so.